actually on Air Force One traveling from Syracuse, New York to Hagerstown, Maryland, when the military undertook this operation to take down that Chinese spy balloon. President Biden spoke to reporters uh, just in the last hour where he tried to clearly lay out the timeline of when he gave that order, saying he told his military officials he wanted to shoot down that plane as soon as possible. Take a listen to what the president had to say. On Wednesday, when I was briefed on the balloon, I ordered the Pentagon to shoot it down on Wednesday as soon as possible. They decided without doing damage to anyone on, on the ground. They decided that the best time to do that was as it got over water outside within our within 12 mile limit. They successfully took it down and I want to compliment our aviators who did it and we'll have more to report on this uh, a little later. Thank you. Mr. President, what did you say about China? China? What's your message to China? You were saying the recommendation from your was from your national security. I told them to shoot it down. On Wednesday. On Wednesday. But the recommendation They from said them. to me, let's wait till the safest place to do it. So the president quite emphatic there that he did give that order on Wednesday. Of course, he had been facing a slew of criticism from Republicans up on Capitol Hill who had slammed the president for not taking action sooner. We've heard from Republicans today praising the decision to shoot down that balloon, but they did say that they wish that he had taken these steps much sooner. Of course, there have also been Democrats who have major questions for the White House about how exactly this has all played out. Senator Mark Warner, the head of the Senate Intelligence Committee earlier in the week said that China itself wouldn't have allowed a balloon like this to fly over their heartland. We know that Senator John Tester, who is the chair of a subcommittee for appropriations that deals with defense, he has said that he wants to hold hearings uh, relating to this matter. But certainly the president has faced a lot of political pressure. Of course, I will note he was asked there what kind of message this sends to China. He did not answer that question, but this certainly serves as a major tension point in that relationship with China. China. Well, I think the United States has sent that message. Uh, Arlette Sines, uh, thank you very much. With me now on the phone is CNN's chief national security correspondent, Jim Shudo. Uh, Jim, uh, to that point, I mean, I guess we're, we're reaching a new, uh, I guess, moment in the relationship, tense relationship between the United States and China and uh, President Biden making it very clear on Wednesday he wanted to shoot this thing down. It's a critical moment, Jim, in the relationship between two superpowers, which was already tense and is now more tense. Uh, of course, the first hostile act, China floating this highly capable surveillance balloon over the continental U.S., including over flying several sensitive installations. And now uh, a U.S. president making a decision to, to fire weapons, fire a missile from an F-22 fired fighter jet to destroy that surveillance balloon, but also critically take it down in U.S. territorial waters off the coast of South Carolina with ships on the surface there, uh, as we're told, uh, going to make an attempt at least to, to collect uh, what it can from here that they can further learn uh, exactly what Chinese capabilities are. I think it's also critical to note, uh, Jim, as Orrin was saying, that uh, the U.S. says they were able to block the surveillance balloon's ability to gather intelligence while it was over the U.S., while at the same time, in effect, turning the tables to gather intelligence on that balloon's capabilities. That's critical. But I think big picture, uh, this is a tense moment. It was already tense. We had a U.S. Air Force general uh, within the last week or so warning his uh, forces under his command to be prepared for the prospect of war with China as soon as the year 2025. That's not the consensus assessment from the U.S., but it's not far off uh, for, from the urgency that U.S. officials feel about the prospect for escalation with China in the coming years. And now you have a very tangible instance of that with uh, missiles fired uh, in anger or in response uh, to a Chinese provo pro provocation. It's a tense time. Absolutely. We might and we might see more provocations to come. Uh, Jim Shido, uh, thanks for that expertise, as always. We appreciate it. I want to go now to CNN's Tom Foreman for more on the spy balloon. He's been uh, watching this all day, Tom, a very dramatic conclusion uh, to what has been a tense few days over the United States with yeah, uh, this balloon actually, making its way across the country. Yeah, we're actually coming up on three full days of this being part of the game here. It's believed that it took off from China here, came up over the Aleutian Islands, past Alaska, Canada down this way, and then ended up down in here. That would be roughly an 8,500 mile trip or a third of the distance around the world. Let's look at what it came over, though, on the way here. When we had these spottings here, 
we, it gave us an idea of the path it was following through the United States here. There were these reports that maybe it was guided to some degree, but this also matches up pretty well with what the jet stream would do with any balloon out there. What did it pass over? Close to a dozen nuclear facilities, missile facilities, somewhere around five or six large military facilities along the way here, and of course some fairly big towns. It got reasonably close to Kansas City, St. Louis, Nashville, and some others before coming into its, its finish here at the end. Oren said a moment ago something very interesting when you pair it with what Jim was saying there. They said that this is in 47 feet of water. We had already looked at the ocean shelf out here up to about 35 miles before you go out. It can go up to 600, 700 feet. So if it's in 47 feet, that is a very precise, excellent depth for them to recover it in. It also means they know precisely where it came down, that it didn't get lost in the fall and they're out there looking for it. They know where it is. Really important. The question now is what are they going to find? One of the questions that military analysts will have about this is was the information that was being collected, the stuff they couldn't block or whatever they were trying to block, was that native to this hardware? Did it live here in some fashion on some kind of drive, some kind of chip, some sort of something? Or was it being streamed to China and is all the memory here empty? It doesn't mean it's useless. Even if you don't have that, you'd at least have the hardware to give you some idea of what it was supposed to do along the way, some of what it might have been looking at. But those are key things they have to look at when they look through this technology once they're able to fish it out of the water which they hope they can do down here, and that has not been damaged too terribly in the fall. Jim? All right, Tom, for we know the Pentagon wants to get its hands on that uh, balloon and all of the equipment coming with it.